Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, it's April 6th, is it not? It is indeed April 6th, the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2011. Not the year of Muhammad, no, the year of Jesus Christ. Ha <laughs> ha! Praise God. And here we are, live, Mubashar in the flesh, with news and views once again. Oh, I hope you're watching, all you dear viewers. I apologize, I haven't been with you for some time now. I've been deep undercover under a secret special operation, top secret, to undermine the Islamization of the United States of America. Uh, I'd like to share with you more of the details, but basically, uh, I do have a very special announcement that has been uh, advertised on our website, and yes, even right here on our channel, special announcement about news and views that I'll be sharing with you a little bit later on in the show. Hey, what is tonight's topic? Well, tonight's topic is a bit racy, if you pardon the pun. It's entitled, Obama, Brothers in the Hood? Does Obama have brothers in the hood? How about in the Islamic Brotherhood? Yes, indeed. I believe we find that uh, it seems, it seems, all evidence would point to the thought that Barack Hussein Obama is doing all that he can to support the Islamic Brotherhood and other radical Islamic organizations and certainly Muslim uh, jihadists around the world. Whether he realizes it or not, whether he wants to admit it or not, that's exactly what he's doing. This liberal uh, peace pipe smoking type uh, president who uh, really ridiculed George Bush for going to war against Iraq seems to have a hair trigger when it comes to Libya. I was rather surprised myself. And uh, wh why is it that uh, he failed to support uh, Hosni Mubarak? Sure, uh, even a lot of Arab Christians don't like Hosni Mubarak, but the United States government sure did, billions and billions of dollars. One of the only real allies the United States had in the Middle East, uh, a nation that had made peace with Israel, at least formally speaking, and Israel, formally speaking, is still one of America's uh, greatest allies in the world, even though the relations seem to have cooled with uh, Barack Hussein Obama's presidency. Anyhow, uh, the question is, why is it that uh, Barack Hussein Obama and the current administration seems to be... Uh, trying to get rid, if you will, supplanting the bad for the worse. You say, well, Hosni Mubarak's bad. We need to get rid of him. Uh, Colonel Gaddafi is bad. We need to get rid of him. Well, maybe they are both bad. You could say the same for Saddam Hussein. But getting rid of the bad to replace it with the worse isn't such a great idea. You know, people should have listened to that uh, long ago, uh, because this is what takes place. You know, this whole idea of change, we're all about change. You know, change can go two ways. It can go in the right direction, and it can go in the complete wrong direction. And, of course, that's what we see happening in our foreign policy in the United States of America, in particular in relation and, and uh, with respect to our relation with Islamic nations. Hey, let's take a look at tonight's top article. Remember, give us a call, 248-416-1300. I want to hear from you, dear viewers. I want to hear from Peter in Germany. I want to hear from Stanislavos, Stanislavos in Lithuania. Are you watching? God bless you. I got your email. Thank you so much. What a great encouragement. I want to hear from all of you. Hey, Manu, are you out there? Hadn't heard from you in a long time. Maybe you're converted to Christianity. You'd like to share your testimony on the air. We'd love to hear from you. Hey, let's take the first article tonight uh, within this subject of Obama's brothers in the hood. Of course, that's a play on words, but we're talking about the Islamic Brotherhood. It seems that Obama has uh, friends, or at least a great affection for the Islamic Brotherhood and other fundamental Muslim movements, and this is why. We're helping in Libya not Gaddafi, but we're helping the freedom fighters. We're helping the uh, insurgents in this case, but they're not really uh, calling it that, are they? Let's take a look at this article, very revealing. Libyan rebel commander, these are people, by the way, the United States is supporting, cut, this is a, this is a direct quote, cut Gaddafi's throat, then establish an Islamic state. Now, that surely wouldn't be a good Muslim who would say such a thing as that, would it? Well, let's take a look. I tried to tell you, here is yet more evidence that Obama's action in Libya is aiding Islamic jihad. 
Libyan rebel commander cut Gaddafi's throat, then established an Islamic State, while American intelligence experts search for, quote-unquote, flickers of jihadist involvement in the Libyan rebellion, a French reporter on a brief visit to eastern Libya had no problem finding numerous jihadists on the front. Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Everyone watch Gomer Pyle. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. About 99% of our uh, aug uh, audience doesn't know that. But if there's any Americans out there, give me a call, encourage me, tell me I'm not going crazy. All right, the jihadists go to the front. This is the title of the French journalist Julien Fourchet report from eastern Libya that appears in the latest edition of the French Sunday paper, Le Journal du Dimanche, the journal of uh, Sunday. And uh, what did this French reporter find and uncover that uh, American reporters uh, don't want to say? Whereas American officials uh, have been straining to make out uh, any jihadist influence in eastern Libyan rebellion against the rule of Muammar al-Qaddafi, Fouché encountered a flagrant jihadist presence, it says, and met with participants who talked openly about their dedication to jihad and or their desire to establish an Islamic state. Absolutely. We are supporting in Libya, in Egypt, in these places, we are supporting either directly or indi indirectly Muslim fundamentalists who want to take a country that was a secular Islamic state that at least the American government had some relations with, and we, they want to make it completely Islamic, completely Sharia, which would follow, of course, Surah 929, fight the, uh, fight the people of the book, Ayyutu al-Kitab, the people who have been given the book, until they acknowledge that Islam is superior, until they pay the jizya, and, uh, and they feel themselves subdued, Hum Sagharun, Surah Al-Tawbah, Surah 9, verse 29. This is Sharia law. This is an Islamic state. And this is what your tax dollars and mine, dear American brothers and sisters, are paying for in the Barack Hussein Obama administration. Let's listen to the type of people that we are supporting through Obama's presidency. On the front near the oil-producing town of Brega, for instance, Fouché spotted a bearded commander on a sand dune giving orders by satellite phone. The man wore the traditional robe favored by the Salafist current of Islamic fundamentalism and had a clashing cough slung over his shoulder. You can't speak to him, rebel fighters told Fouché. He's not fighting for Libya. If he's fighting today, it is for Allah. Fouché described seeing imams, listen carefully, imams driving among the ranks of the rebel fighters in a pickup truck and reciting prayers over a loudspeaker. Islam and war, Islam and killing, Islam and violence go hand in hand ever, ever, ever since Muhammad killed 700 Jews in Medina by beheading each and every one of them. Ever since the Hijra, that's when Islam is dated from, not when Muhammad was born, not when Muhammad started preaching tolerance in Mecca, but when Muhammad and his few followers, the only few he could get by preaching a tolerant Islam, and went to uh, Medina, the Hijra, that's when Islam is dated from, and that's when Surah al tawbah began to be revealed in other surahs, which bring forth the violence, fight and kill the unbeliever, kill the mushrikeen, katalu al-mushrikeen, kill him wherever you find him. That's Islam. Further to the east, in Darna, one of the strongholds of the rebellion, Fouché met a certain Sheikh Khukri al-Hasi, the director of the town's principal mosque, the Al-Sahba Mosque. As previously reported on uh, this uh, PGAM media, according to captured Al-Qaeda personnel records, Darna furnished more foreign fighters to Al-Qaeda in Iraq than any other foreign city or town. This, uh, despite the fact that the town's population is only 80,000. Interesting. We're supporting Muslim uh, jihadists for Al-Qaeda in Libya to fight against Gaddafi and those same Muslim jihadists that our American tax dollars are paying to support against Muammar Gaddafi are, are the same Muslim jihadists that went and fought American soldiers in Iraq. Can you imagine? That's what's happening under this current presidency. That's what's happening under tolerance. That's what's happened under the ridiculous uh, opium morphine pipe of tolerance and political correctness that our government and foolish liberals in the United States of America are trying to uh, uh, euthanize us on. And you see, it is complete rubbish, if you like, for our uh, Muslim friends in London who, London who like to use that.